Hey guys, so today we're going to start to look at an introduction to reflections in the coordinate plane. And although this may be a new topic to you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen reflections in the real world, so you'll have a rough idea of how this works. So reflection is otherwise known as a flip, and an object and its reflection are the same shape and size, but the figures face opposite directions. So you see here with this baby looking in the mirror, the image is flipped. You'll see here with the reflection of the water, the image is flipped. Still the same shape and size, but it's just inverted. So what is a line of reflection? So the line that acts as a mirror is called the line of reflection. And both objects are going to be the same distance away from the line of reflection. So if we look back at these examples, right, this would be the line of reflection right here. And then, you know, this tree is a certain distance from the line of reflection, and this tree is a certain distance from the line of reflection. If I look at this baby, right, the mirror would be the line of reflection, and the distance from him to the mirror here and back is the same. So now we're going to see how to perform a reflection in the coordinate plane. So you can reflect over just about any line on the coordinate plane, but today we're going to focus on two of the basic ones that are pretty common which is reflecting over the y-axis. So remember the y-axis is vertical, goes up and down. And then we're gonna look at reflecting over the x-axis, which is horizontal, left to right. So remember that when we reflect, we want each point to be the same distance away from the y-axis. So here's my line of reflection, it's already shaded. I'm just gonna go ahead and you know shade it again. I want all of these points to be the same distance away. So I take one point at a time, so let's start with A, and I count how far it is from the line of reflection. So A is two points or two units to the left from the line of reflection. So if I wanna get a mirror image of that, I wanna count two points to the right. So this right here is gonna be my A prime. I'm going to do the same thing with each of my other points. So B would be one, two, three, four units from my line of reflection. So I'm going to mirror it one, two, three, four units from that line of reflection. Okay, same thing. C is one, two units from my line of reflection. So I'm going to mirror it one, two units from my line of reflection. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, connect my points. And notice I have the same figure, same shape, same size. And I'm just gonna go ahead and write the new coordinates. So the new coordinates for A are gonna be two comma five. The new coordinates for B are going to be 4, 2. And the new coordinates for C are going to be 2, 2. All right. Let's take a look at reflecting over the x-axis now. So same exact deal. I want each of my points to be the same distance from the line of reflection, okay? Just rather than thinking of a mirror going, you know, this way, our mirror is going to be this way, okay? And you could also think of it as like folding your paper in half vertically and having everything match. And here I'm thinking of folding my paper in half horizontally and having everything match. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to count how far each of my points are from the line of reflection. So A is one, two, three, four, five units from my line of reflection. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five units from my line of reflection. This will be A prime. B is two units above my line of reflection. So it's now gonna be two units below my line of reflection. C is two units above my line of reflection. So now it's gonna be two units below my line of reflection. 
So I'm going to go ahead, connect each of my points, and again, write down my new coordinates. So A is going to be negative 2 comma negative 5. B is going to be negative 4 comma negative 2. And C is going to be negative 2 comma negative 2. So once again, counting how far each of your points are from the line of reflection, pretty straightforward, not a bad method, but we might not always have a coordinate grid, okay? So just like kind of what we did with translations where we made a rule, we're going to see if we can come up with a rule, okay? So we're going to have one rule for whenever we reflect over the y-axis, and we're going to have another rule for whenever we reflect over the x-axis. So to help us come up with that rule, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to write the original coordinates, okay? So looking back at our first example, the original coordinates for A were negative 2, 5. The original coordinates for B were negative 4, 2. The original coordinates for C were negative 2, 2. I'm going to compare each of my original coordinates to my new coordinates and see if I notice a pattern. So negative 2, 5 became 2, 5. Negative 4, 2 became 4, 2. And negative 2, 2 became 2, 2. So we're going to notice in each of our cases here, the y coordinate stayed the same. So 5, 5. 2, 2, 2, 2. However, our x coordinate changed. So a negative 2 became a positive 2. A negative 4 became a positive 4. And a negative 2 became a positive 2. Okay? So I don't want to just say that everything became negative, right? Because let's say, for example, I already had a negative x to start. Let's say it was like here, like the point negative 2, negative 3. If I reflected negative 2, negative 3 over the y-axis, then it would become over here 2 comma negative 3. Okay, or likewise, if I went the reverse, like 2, negative 3, but it became negative 2, negative 3. So we're noticing in each case, the sign of the x-coordinate changes. The y-coordinate does not change, okay? And I can express this as xy becoming negative xy. And that negative indicates that I changed the sign. So a negative 2, a negative of negative 2 will become a positive 2. Okay? A positive 2 will become a negative 2. So whenever you reflect across the y-axis, okay, you change the sign of the x-coordinate. Okay? So notice, even though we reflected over y, the y-coordinate wasn't touched, just the x-coordinate changed signs, okay? Hopefully, you could kind of get a theory of what's going on when we reflect over the x-axis, which is that bottom example, okay? But again, I'll kind of write out the coordinates. So my original for A is negative 2, 5. My original for B is negative 4, 2. My original for C is negative 2, 2. Okay, let's do the same kind of deal. So negative 2, 5 became negative 2, negative 5. Negative 4, 2 became negative 4, negative 2. Negative 2, 2 became negative 2, negative 2. Okay, so we're going to notice again the x-coordinate here 
in each case did not change, so that's the opposite from last time, but the y coordinate was the one that changed signs. Okay? So when you reflect over the x axis, you're going to change the sign of the y coordinate. Okay? Reflect over y, change the sign of x. Reflect over x, change the sign of y.